Okay guys, so unfortunately I haven't managed to find um, all of my tripods and everything yet. So this is uh, unfortunately a fixed tripod. It's the only position I can uh, I can film in, but it should do just to do a quick inbox review of the Sturm Tiger. So lovely box art as normal by Ryfield Models. Um, Jason who does a lot of the, the box art here, um, he's obviously done this one as well. So on the box, we've got a couple of previews of the interior. So we have the full turret interior and a partial interior in the lower hull. So this is a partial interior kit, it's not the full interior model. Um, I will put a link in the description to the full interior model if you wanted to build that one instead. Uh, I've got some nice color profiles, once again done by Megama. I think this is probably gonna be the one that I build. Uh, really interesting, just not quite sure how I'm going to do the almost uh, dog burn looking texture on the paintwork there. We've just got a plain one in Dunkelgelb and then we've got our fairly typical ambush pattern as well. So, and the sides of the boxes, it just shows the, the box out. Okay, so I have had a quick peek through this already. The box did arrive damaged. Um, I was made aware of this by the hobby store that I bought it from. It's not damaged any of the internal components, it's just that the box is a little bit creased. So, not to worry on that one. So let's flip this lid off. We'll put the instruction manual to the side, we will come back to that. So, it's quite a packed box, as per usual for most of these Ryfield model kits now. So, starting off, we've got the turret. I'll the turret top. Um, Really nice detail, is a little cast work on it, some small details in the paint, sorry in the finish, sorry it should come out nice in the paint. Um, and yeah, some of the little components there, uh, some vent covers and things which are really nicely detailed. We've got the, the lower hull, the one piece tub, it's not full tub, because we've still got to put on the drive parts at the front there, for the drive sprockets. But you can tell this is from the interior model because it's got all of the, uh, I'll tell you what, make it a bit easier to see, shall we? Don't need the packets anyway because it's going straight on my bench. So, okay, there we go. Take a lot of the glare off it now. So we do have a lot of detail on the interior. You can see where all the parts would actually fix in if it was building the, the full interior model. It would be the same, same lower hull. There's some nice details on the underside of it as well. A couple of little ejection marks there. Nice and easy to file away. Some lovely detail in where the torsion bar suspension goes in. So I actually thought there was a bit of a warp in the hull then, but it's not, it's the shape of the hull. So let's take this turret out so you can have a, have a nosy at that one as well. I'm all right. Sorry for the rattling guys, you're gonna get it. So, Camera don't want to focus now this morning. Let me out of the way. There we go. <sighs> Stupid camera. <laughs> I'm still using my phone camera, guys, for a lot of this. I ain't got a DSLR, so stuff in spec. Do with what we've got. We've also got a bag full of the shells, or the bodies of the shells, should I say. So they're nicely detailed. A little bit of clean up on a few of them. A bit of flash, but nothing too major with that one. So this is just all your running gear, all your road wheels. So again, nicely detailed, as you come to expect from Ryfield models. They always do a really nice, uh, really nice detailing. This camera does not want to focus today. Sorry about this, guys. I might have to turn the auto focus off. Uh, so yeah, that's the road wheels. Two sets of them. <laughs> The bane of every modeler, I think, is the tracks. So uh, it's the same style tracks as always with the Ryfield kits. You've got to put all the guard horns on yourself. You've got the little jigs that are like Lego pieces to assemble the tracks in. The track pins, if you just cut these off at the sprue gates, then these will form up four lengths of track 
per side. So, and the pin from both sides, they are fully workable once they're built and they are nicely detailed. So there's nothing really wrong with them. It's just they're a lot of work. They have modified the actual track links on the older Ryefield kits. There used to be ejection marks in the, the rear of the, uh, the link there, which we had to clean out. There actually isn't any on these ones. They're very nicely formed. Uh, I can't actually see any flash on them. So I think we're going to have a go with the kit ones on this one rather than upgrading to furl tracks. Uh, I reckon that will be like three, four days building itself, just doing the tracks, but I might get into the swing of it and it might not be a problem. Uh, let's take this out of the packet for you. Let's get rid of that. Right, so what have we got in here then? Right, so on this one, we've got a lot more of the shell details, um, some inner components for building up the front, um, Oh, the front firewall of the vehicle. These are part of the shell mounting systems, and then you've got the tips for your shells. Again, really, really nice detailing on all of these parts. I'll post up some screenshots, uh, some screenshots, some photographs as well in this review so that you can see these parts up close and in detail because my camera won't focus. So, you know, we'll do what we can with this review. I'm not throwing it on the floor this time, though, like I did my... Uh, Amusing hobby, so there might not be as many bloopers in this one. <laughs> so, what we've got on this one? So, we've got the torsion bars, we've got the drive sprockets, so the final drive, and the drive sprockets. Obviously, we've got the exhaust cowling and some other little details on here. Uh, they've also put down the side here, it's probably you're not going to see it. No, you're not. There you go. So you can see all the individual bolts that are here. So you cut these off the sprue and you glue them on. If you wanted some extra bolt detail in, there's a few different sizes in there, ranging from small through to larger ones and the different shapes that they're produced for the bolts themselves. I didn't actually see any call-outs for them in the instructions. It could be just that this is recycled from the Tiger 1. Uh, it's a recycled Tiger 1 sprue from some of the other Ryefield models. So it might have been used on them, but maybe not on this kit. We'll have a look at the instructions. I may have glossed over it while I was uh, while I was working away. So got the rear engine plate here and a few more of the smaller details that go on the vehicle. Uh, Again, really nice detailed, very, very little flash. There's some very fine components on here, like micro components. So uh, that's going to be fun trying to build. Had problems with the ratio of kits before you, but I have managed to find my magnifying uh, glasses now. So hopefully I can take some of the eye strain off. So as you can see, there's a, there's a lot of sprues with these kits. And this is only a partial interior. Like I said, I do have the full interior version of this model as well. And uh, yeah, that there's probably another six, seven sprues on top of this. So the box is very, very chunky. Uh, got all the jerry cans. We've got our jack and our tools on this one. Uh, storage box for the rear of the turret. Tow it? Turret. I will get my words out today. So yeah, some nice detailing on that once again. On this one, we've got, I don't know if there's actually an option to do it with a solid part as well, but the top of the hull, uh, the top of the turret, has this clear part. So it's hard to show clear parts really on a camera because you can't, you can't pick them up very well. But yeah, so this is the top of the turret. So it's obviously going to just drop in on top of there. Um, again, that's quite nice, but... On my full interior model that I got from uh, from Ryfield, this actually had some very fine scratches in it, and this is the same. There is a couple of scratches on that, so I may be able to sand them out, but there's a bit of detail where they are. So, not sure if I'll use that. Uh, if there is a solid option, I'm probably going to go for the solid option and just leave it as a lift off top. If not, we're just going to paint that one. And then again, leave the top removable so you can glance down into the turret. So we've got our decal sheet. 
which on this one there's not many decals really um there's no unit numbers on these unless there's a separate decal sheet in there and your photo etch so there's quite a lot of photo etch once again for this kit because there is the um all the brackets which hold the shells and they are quite small to do so and we've got some poly caps as well so the poly caps are for the gun i believe so that you can have it movable as long as you don't put the gun lock on the breech you're okay with that one And more details, so we've got the front plate, and that's, I think there's a couple of options for the front plate, and here are the side plates inside the turret, there's different details, some lovely texture on them, I don't know if I can pick it up on the camera, but it's uh, really nice, like, I don't know how to describe it, it almost looks like it's been 3D printed, it's that kind of texture on it, and we've obviously got the, the engine grills and details for the uh, the main gun on it. Yeah, some nice, honestly, really nice details. None of the parts are knocked off the sprues, which is also really nice. Um, there is some fantastic detail. You know, if you wanted to sit and pick this out, it really would look like the real thing once you've built it. Not sure how far I'm going to take the detailing. I might hyper detail this kit and make it as a very slow burn build, but that makes it very awkward to film for a YouTube video. Uh, I'm tempted to film the build. And do a YouTube video for the build, so we'll see. So these are the inside turret walls. We've got here, we've got the side armor plates, uh, different types of gun mantlet. So there must be some variations there. I need to do a bit more research. But yeah, all in all, very, very impressive molding and everything. It's absolutely superb, very, very crisp, very well detailed. The weld lines also that I can see in here, normally I've started cutting weld lines out of models. Um, these are actually really, really nice off the bat. We'll see how it goes as I build the model. And finally, the last screw here. So it looks like we've got some alternate dry sprockets on this and some alternate side armor. So it looks like there's a couple of different options that you can do. Um, did that have, yeah, this one's got the individual uh, skirts on the side, so you can build them up as individual pieces, whilst this has got the skirts as the full full piece. Uh, I'll probably use the individual ones, because I'm going to knock some off the vehicle like it's uh, been damaged, but not a lot of these saw a lot of heavy action. So, you know, I'm going to have to decide how exactly I'm going to build this. You've got the frontal plate there. Uh, track hangers which again are quite nice. I think they've got some photo wet parts that drop on as well. But yeah, all in all guys, very, very, very impressive. Let me just put some of these sprues away. So I don't want to knock any parts off now. I'm talking about the, uh, the bags. I've done that before and managed to lose parts to the carpet monster, which you don't want to do. But yeah, it certainly looks like a very, very fun kit to build. You ever noticed once you take these parts out of a box, you can never get them back in correctly? Try to do it as best as we can so I can at least get the lid back on. Let's get the big chunky components in. Not like I say, I'm not too worried about getting that scratched because I think I am going to paint it. I think it looks a bit odd with a oh, sorry, guys, fully clear part in there. Let's get the tracks back. Let's just have a quick closer look at this decal sheet. Let's see what's actually going on with it. I, like I said, I don't think there's actually any markings. I don't think these were ever... Uh, they're not produced as numbered units. I guess that's to allow the modeler to have a bit of a play. But you have got the Iron Cross insignias. Let's see what else we've got. So we've got the polycaps as we discussed, just two. Yeah, very basic decal sheet. Uh, it's got the gauges for the driver's compartment because we do have the driver's compartment on this one. Uh, you've got your shell stickers, stickers, decals, uh, some strips, which I'm not quite sure what they're for yet. So let's have a look. Yeah, your insignias. So that's really cool. Got a bit of uh, bit of brass wire here. 
should imagine that's for making the crane to winch the shells into position. And then, yeah, lots of photo work. So we've got our grills. Uh, this looks like a lining for the inside of the the breech there on the gun. And some tool clasps. It's going to be some very, very fine PE work here, which I'm not a huge fan of photo etch. And I know Ryefield do not include a alternative neither. So if you mess up the PE part, then you pretty much uh, you stuck. However, one thing I have started doing is if you take an old pop can, or in this case a Strombo can, then the aluminium inside you can actually make PE parts with that if you've got the time. So if I do mess something up, I can probably save it. No, I may. I will mess something up. But yes, I, I, I might be wrong about the being the plastic alternatives. I'll have a look in the manual as we go through, but I didn't see any optionals when I was looking through it earlier on. And then we've got our manual. So, lovely full colour picture. And on the rear of it, I'm actually going to cut this off and put it in a as a little post on my uh, my hobby wall. There, you've obviously got your your steps here, which says like you know cement bend dirt cement it's uh, nicely laid out as always with the Ryefield instructions let me just get that off and let's bring the camera down just a little bit for you guys so you can see the instructions easier just bear with my big chunky fingers in the way there for a second right yeah so hopefully you should be able to see the manual a little bit easier now so you've got all your sprue layout as per usual with this uh, and various other parts and then we're straight into the construction of doing all the parts for the inside of the turret straight away we're hit with photo etch which is the uh, the brackets for the shells got to admit not something I'm looking forward to doing uh, <clears throat> one thing I will say about Ryfield's manuals is they're really really well illustrated so uh, and there's a lot of clear information so you should not really go wrong I say that it's always room for error. Um, but yeah, the, the inside of the turret actually builds up really, really quickly. But because I want to have the top removable on this one, I will be painting the inside of the turret. So it'll be case to get the turret built, leave all of these inside walls loose so that I can remove them from the vehicle, paint them, and then put them back into position. Uh, trying to make painting as modular. Modular. Oh, I can't even say that word. That's a blooper. Oh, man! Uh, but yeah... <laughs> Trying to make it as module as possible for the building process. Uh, then you're onto like the the actual gun mechanism itself, which is quite a complicated little build, and there's some extra really tiny little details that need to go on around here. But we'll figure them out. There's also alternate parts. I'm not sure what the difference is between the two about getting the sprues out and comparing them. And then I don't know if there was actually if it's going to go into be a noticeable difference on the. The built vehicle would have been an interior part um and yeah we do have that photo etch rifling to drop into the the barrel there so that could be quite a challenge to build in its in itself as i said this is going to be a slow burn project for me because a lot of the time with these i jump ahead i mess them up and i don't end up completing them they get shelved and it just seems far too nice a model to shelve so um so it says here basically we can lock the gun or we can leave the gun unlocked so you can move it. I'll be leaving it as a movable version. It makes it easier uh, when you're facilitating for painting and things like that. And some extra details drop into the front hull. So I'll probably get these installed before I... Uh, so I'll be finishing that step, sorry, along with that step. So it's kind of go through this manual and study it and, you know, piece it together however you would like to build it. And then one to... The lower hull construction, some interior parts going in, some radios, uh, and some electronic boxes. That's about it, really, for the lower interior. There's a few details in the forward compartment, which actually doesn't show you the instructions for that, you know. <laughs> so, what they've done here, this instruction step, this is actually taken from the Ryefield interior version, uh, where you've got the full interior, because this has got the the metal bracing in the flooring for the uh, torsion bars. It's alright guys, I can't speak today, sorry. And you can see the driver's seat and that is actually included and the gearbox here. Now that isn't part of this kit, so 
it strikes me as odd why they've just included the little radio. Maybe you can see it when you look down through the top of the hull. Until I get to that construction stage, I can't really tell. And then we start dropping in the uh, the turret flooring, which looks pretty damn detailed. Uh, there was some really nice detailing on the actual part in the in the box. Got to drill some holes in the rear plate, as always with a lot of these Targa kits. You've got to add additional holes if you want to have the stowage on or not. So again, it's a, it's another thing you've got to decide really before you go ahead with the build. And then obviously you complete the rear engine, the external rear engine uh, wall. And that gets fitted to the vehicle, a bit of photo etch to go on there. The jack's got quite a bit of photo etch on it as well. And the metal cable, making yourself, it says here, 8mm. So basically these little parts, uh, you've, you've got to make some of them up yourself. Which is fine. They've provided the cable. I have some copper wire, which I'm probably going to use instead. Because it's, it's easier to bend, easier to work with. Uh, details on the tools. The tool clasps are photo etch clasps as you can see here so these are you've got to put them together yourself i can't see any call outs there in the instructions for an alternative part so it may be a case of that these tools do actually have the plastic brackets molded on and if you'd like to you cut them off uh, without digging through the sprue box again i can't confirm um, but a lot of these kits that do include you know, the, the tool clasps are actually there in plastic. You've got to shave them off and then you build up the PE ones and you replace them. I'm kind of hoping for that option because I really don't get on with photo etch. I don't know why, I just find it very fiddly and it annoys me slightly. So we do have quite a lot of photo etch when you look at these sort of side profiles of the vehicle. It shows you all the different clasps and brackets which need to go on there. And same on the off side of the vehicle. Just the brackets for the spade. To be honest, I'm sure when I was looking at the uh, the shovel there, I'm sure that had the the bracket molded on. So maybe there is an option. I'll have a look, I'll have a look before I end the video. Uh, rear engine deck. Once again, there's quite a few parts here that they're saying not to glue, which again I find a little unusual. Like this is the engine access hatch, and they're saying don't glue it. But there's no engine in the vehicle, so really. It's redundant. I will probably be fixing that down. I think it's so you can purse it open. Maybe if you've got a spare Maybach engine kicking about, you could go and uh, drop it into the vehicle just to detail that part of it. But that, to be honest, seems to me like it's come from the full interior version of the, the kit again in the manual, like they've reused the CAD rendering. So I'm just going to take a slap of my coffee here. Ah, that's better. And then the only part of the interior really that you can see is <clears throat> we've got the shells to go inside the lower hull so there's a few of them to get in there and then we're straight on to actually buttoning the vehicle up so yeah the engine deck there is nothing in there to, to view that's quite clear there so why they've told you not to glue that like i said not sure got some really nice like 3d cad renderings here at the inside uh, depending how you want to display the gun if you want to leave it open with the breech if you want to put a shell in or if you actually want to leave this fully open. Uh, I've seen a photograph from World War II where there's a troop stood inside the, the gun, so maybe you want to replicate that, you know, for a bit of fun. And you kind of got this cutaway as well to show you the shell layout in the vehicle, which is a, a really nice little touch, actually, that. I do like it when they do a cutaway on the vehicle. Uh, and then, really, it's finishing the, the turret top, the upper turret. Which again, if it's clear, you've got to be very careful when you glue in your, your parts to it because um, the Tamiya Extra Thin can uh, miscolor clear parts. So you could use uh, Megamo's uh, their glues. They've got some uh, some various glues that you can use. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, but basically it's like a PVA glue that dries clear. Uh, I want to say it's like a Wonder Glue or something. Or you could use maybe CA, but again, CA has the problem of miscolouring. So, yeah, moving on, since I can't get my words out. So one thing I will be doing, you can display the top of the, um, the top plate of the turret. You can display it with the, the shell loading hatch open or closed. So I'll be, or removed, sorry. So I'll actually be removing that 
and displaying it as open because it's got the crane so i'm going to have the crane with a shell on it like it's dropping it into the vehicle like they're loading up basically so very very cool very little on the track information it shows you the basic construction of the tracks so you can see there you've got put the individual guard horns in it's an absolute pain but uh, stick a movie on something you know something you enjoy watching and to be honest they're not too bad the links and everything are really good it's the guard horns that i uh, really detest doing on these kits i don't know why they just don't mold them on uh so the same 96 links per side of the vehicle for that one a lot more photo etch brackets going on to the turret exterior the rear of the turret and then the final step is to build the crane again it's saying to use the wire here now i've got some uh, i'm not going to use wire i'm actually going to use some nylon rope so that the um the shell will actually swing rather than being like stiff and rigid i think it's a bit unusual and i may leave this part off to paint and detail it separately before i actually fix it to the vehicle but that is literally the last step we attach the crane to the back of the vehicle the uh, the shell winch there and then we're on to our marking options uh, again really nice color profiles uh, the, the few photos i found online uh, two of them that i've seen definitely don't have camouflage they are just in dunkelgeld uh, whilst all the rest do seem to have some kind of camouflage work i've not seen this one or not that i've noticed but it literally does look like little dog burns in the uh in the paint finish there not sure like i say how i'm going to replicate that in painting uh, i'm going to look see if there's any masks available for a start so that i can get the paint in spot on uh, if not i might actually hand paint all of this camo and obviously have to hand paint the little dog burns as well so uh, reluctant to do that then we have just got your plain you know dunkle gelb finish on this one um it's up to you guys you know if you wanted to build it that way it looks a little plain a little boring but you can do a lot of really cool oil weathering with just a dunkle gelb vehicle so uh for those of you that may be intimidated by camouflage a bit like myself i i was i seem to have actually gotten over that now um and then you've just got like say your regular ambush kind of pattern here so there's three marking options available none of which are detailed with any um unit numbers so yeah they're really really nice looking kit let's just have a quick dig through for them uh, for them tools before i end this video and see if i was right they don't come with a bracket they don't come with a bracket it helps when you can find them Right, okay, yeah. Just found one of the spades. And this shovel here doesn't actually have any of the brackets on. It is just a plain, plain shovel. Uh, there was another sprue though, wasn't there, with a load more shovels and stuff on it. So where did that one go? Right, yes, we do have the alternate builds here so we've got a shovel here I'll tell you what take that out of the way so you can see it so we do have this shovel here which does have the the bracket already molded on and it has been hollowed out so it does actually look like a real tool clasp and then you've got the alternate version here without the tool clasps molded to the vehicle so you can use the photo etch same here with the axe we've got one here that's got the two clamps on this one does not uh the hammer is the same so there is the option there guys if you are a little bit intimidated with photo etch there is alternate parts on the sprues so that you can swap them out you don't have to you know build with photo etch so i'm not sure which option i'm going to approach i do have a fear of photo etch so i think in all honesty i'm going to have a go at the photo etch knowing that i do have a backup option i think that's going to be the best way to tackle it and try and learn something new at the same time putting all these back away again because otherwise i'm going to stand on them so yeah guys that has been my review of the or the inbox review sorry for the stern tiger rifield number 5035 
So it looks like a really, really nice kit. And I can't wait to get started. I'm not sure if I'm going to do this one as a YouTube build because I'm trying to think of the logistics behind doing that. It is a very, very big build. It's going to take a very long time. Even if it had multi-parts, then it could get a little bit dull and a little bit boring. So <clears throat> let me know in the comments if you guys want to see a build video. That's probably going to be the easiest way. And thanks for checking in, guys. If you haven't already, please you know, like and subscribe to my channel. I will be doing a lot more videos in the future now. Uh, especially with this current pandemic lockdown situation. It's going to be a little while before I return to work. So I've, I've got the perfect opportunity. Uh, I've only just moved house. So, you know, it's taken a while to uh, to get set up again. But yeah, so that was this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you all next time. Take it easy.